Hey everyone, let's get into this video. In this video, we're gonna learn how to vibe code apps using Level.io's technique of server vibe coding. It just involves setting up a simple server, logging onto it, installing Claude code, and vibe coding straight from the server. That way, everything you do is already in your production server and you can see it live instantly. It's a great way to go. It's cheap, it's easy, and it's quick. So let's learn how to do it right now. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is set up our uh, server and we're gonna use DigitalOcean for this. So I'll leave a link down in the description. Just go ahead and click on that to bring you to DigitalOcean. Once you're here, you can sign up with Google or GitHub or with your email. I'm just gonna sign in with uh, my Google account. All right, and once you are signed in, you can see I already have a few droplets. That's what they call their servers. They call them droplets. Um, so let's go create another one. So you can come up here and click create. You can go down to droplets and click droplets. And then you can select the region that you're in. So I would recommend selecting whatever region is closest to you as that's gonna give you faster response times. Um, so I'm gonna click San Francisco. Um, you can leave the data center the same, just the default. Um, come down and I would suggest using Ubuntu and then the latest version here, so 25.04. And then you can come select your size. So they have general purpose machines, CPU optimized, memory optimized, all these different types of uh, dedicated CPUs. But for this uh, purpose, I'm just gonna use the basic shared CPU, which is their cheapest. And then you can come and select premium or regular SSD. So I'm just gonna do regular. Um, and then we can select the size. So for this, we don't need too much, uh, too many resources on the machine. So I'm just gonna do $6 a month. So for $6 a month, you can get a virtual private server that will uh, serve plenty of traffic and be able to uh, allow you to mock up your MVP. So let's choose the $6 a month one. We don't need to add any volumes. We don't want any backups. And then you can add an SSH key if you want, um, but you don't have to. We're just gonna do the simplest way to get on the server, which is through DigitalOcean. So you don't have to do this. Um, you come down here and you can give a, a tag if you want, and then you can just click create droplet. So let's just click create droplet. And this might take, you know, two or three minutes to set up. So once the server is live, it's uh, right here. We can just go ahead and click on it. So we'll go ahead and click on this. And now what we can do is we can use a console to go into our server. So just like you can have an, a terminal in your local machine where you can interact with your local machine, you can also enter, open up this console and this lets you interact with the machine that's hosted on DigitalOcean servers out in the cloud somewhere. So we'll go ahead and click this console button to open that up. Cool, and now we're inside of the machine that's hosted on, um, in DigitalOcean servers. So you can run any command that you're normal, uh, you normally run like this, uh, ls, you can you know print the working directory, anything like that. So now what we need to do is install a few things because these servers come with pretty bare, bare bones um, packages installed. So we have to go ahead and add the packages we wanna use. Um, so what we can do is we need npm to get Claude code. So if you go to Claude Code's website, uh, you can see that they recommend installing it with NPM right here. So if we tried to run this, we can just go ahead and test it. It would fail because we don't have NPM installed. See, it says NPM not found. So first off, we have to go get NPM. So how do we do that? You can just Google install NPM Ubuntu. And I, I'll have all these commands in the description too, so don't worry about it. I'll just make it really easy for you. And DigitalOcean actually has uh, an article that tells you how to install it. So uh, you can come down here and you can see that they recommend installing it with apt uh, from the default default repositories. Um, so you can do sudo apt update and then sudo apt install node.js. So let's go ahead and run those two commands. Okay, so we've updated and now we can go ahead and install node.js. You can hit Y to uh, confirm that you want to install it. Okay, so now we have node installed, so we can do node-v, and we can see we have 20.1.8.1, and then we can do npm to install npm. So we'll come over here, sudo apt install npm, and then we can do yes to confirm. Okay, after npm is installed, we can just test that it's uh, installed properly with npm-v. Uh, we can see we have version 9.2.0. Cool, so now we can go ahead and start, uh, well, first we have to install Claude. So we'll go back to Claude and copy that command and install Claude. 
All right, now we have Claude. So now to get started with vibe coding, let's make a directory we can vibe code in. So we'll do nkdir my project. And then now we have that directory created, we can go into it. So we can do a cd my project. And now we can start up Claude. Okay, so first time when you start up Claude, you'll have to log in um, and you'll have to do some setup. So we're gonna keep dark mode. Um, and now we're, we're gonna log in with our <coughs> Claude account. So this will tell you to open a browser, but you can't open a browser in your virtual server. Um, so they give you this link. You can just copy this and you can go and put it into your browser on your local machine. And then you can authorize. And then you'll have to copy this code and go back to your uh, terminal window and just paste that code here. And that will authenticate you. So now you're logged in. Cool. So now we can start using Claude just like we normally would on our local computer. If you're not familiar with Claude, don't worry. It's really easy to use. Um, you just basically talk to it with text and tell, you, tell it what you want it to build. Um, so we can say yes, proceed, that we trust files in this folder. And now we're ready to uh, have Claude build an app for us. So let's just have it build a super simple app just so um, we can get up and running quick. So we'll say build a retro themed to-do list app, okay? So let's just tell Claude to build that and then wait for it to finish. Okay, and if Claude code ever asks if it's allowed to edit some files, you can say yes. You can also say let yes and then allow edits and that will just make it automatically accept edits. So that's what I'm gonna do, it's option two here. All right, so Claude code has finished creating the app. Um, so what we can do is we can go back to DigitalOcean and we can copy our IPv4 address. You can find it right here uh, under your droplet page. So we can just click to copy and we can go and we can paste that in the browser. So what you might expect is the website to show up, but that's not what's gonna happen. So we're gonna click that, put that in, and it's not gonna load our website. And the reason being is because uh, Claude usually starts the web apps that it builds on port 3000, because that's a very common port for web apps to run on in development. Um, so we need to add a server that exposes port 80, because when you connect to a website by default, it's connecting to port 80. So we can just say, uh, in order to do that, we'll have to set up a, a reverse proxy server and we're gonna use Nginx. So come back to your Claude code in your terminal and just say Nginx, uh, just say, create a server using Nginx to expose our web app publicly. You don't really need to know exactly what this is doing, but just know that you're not gonna be able to access your website publicly via your browser until you set up this Nginx server. Um, and Claude knows how to do it perfectly, so you won't really have to worry about it. You just ask it to set it up and it'll do it for you. And we'll just say yes to these commands to install Nginx. All right, you can see in our browser, now we have Nginx installed. So when we go to this uh, IP address, we're seeing Nginx kind of default startup page. Um, and we'll see that change as um, Claude starts to link our web app with Nginx. Um, so it installed Nginx and now it's creating that configuration for our to-do app. All right, we'll allow it to edit that site's available directory. And then we'll say yes to this command as well. And we'll just keep saying yes. I mean, this is the thing about server vibe coding is we're just prototyping here. So Claude could absolutely destroy our server and we wouldn't mind. We can just restart, spin up a new droplet if we wanted to delete this one because none of this code is actually you know, that important. So this is kind of just for prototyping, getting up quick MVPs, testing things. That's what this style of programming is for. Um, I would not recommend doing this if you're planning on, you know, you could, you could do it to make the MVP, but once you have users or people relying on your app being available, I would not recommend doing this. So it installed, uh, Claude installed Nginx, it set up the configuration. So we should be able to refresh this page and see our to-do list app, and we can. Cool, so let's test if it works. Uh, walk the dog, add, cool, and we can check it off. It's got kind of a fun little sound effect here. Great, so, you know, Claude built this app totally by itself, um, but now problem is we don't really wanna give this number, this IP address out to people. Um, we want to have a domain name. So let's set up a domain name. So I like to get my domain names through Namecheap, um, so let's go to Namecheap and I'll have links to this in uh, the description. Um, so 
So we're just going to go sign into Namecheap, right? And then you can buy a domain name. So you could come here and just like my random domain name .com. Like you can go and just buy a domain name. Okay, let's see if this is available. It's not, but one of these, you know, with XYZ or whatever is available. So you could just go add this to your cart, buy it. Once you've purchased it, you can come to your dashboard and I'm just gonna use a domain name um, that I already have. Um, so let's go to, okay. And then you can just click manage on your domain name. Once you're uh, in your domain name, you can click advanced DNS. Okay. And once you're here, we're gonna be changing these records, but let's go talk to Claude Code first. So let's tell it, um, I have a domain name recaller.xyz. Let's set it up. All right, and we'll just say yes to some of these commands. So, and then once uh, Claude has set everything up with Nginx, it should give you some instructions. If it doesn't, you can ask for instructions and I'll provide those in the description as well. Um, but now it gives you instructions to say, go to your domain registrar and then update the A record to point to this IP address. So we can copy our IP address. And this is just the same one we got from DigitalOcean. We can come over to Namecheap and do add record right here, select an A record, and then the host will be at, and then the IP address will be this value. And you can just click save changes. And then we can also set up that www um, subdomain. So we could create a C name um, with this. So it points to the same IP address. So we can add a C name, host would be www, and target would also be that IP address like that. Uh, oops, we could set that up as an A name. Cool, so now we have those two set up. So now instead of going to this domain name, we should be, or we should, instead of going to this IP address, we should be able to go to our domain name here. So let's test it out. And it might take a few minutes for this stuff to propagate, um, but it looks like in this case, it was pretty fast. So now we can set, uh, we can go to recaller XYZ and see our retro app. Great. But notice we have one final problem. It says not secure. Um, so let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go back to Claude Code and say, uh, please set up HTTPS for our website. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna go get a certificate for our website, which is needed to have HTTPS. And then it's gonna set up kind of some auto renewal as well so that our website stays secure. Um, and it's gonna do that with Let's Encrypt. So let's let Claude do that right now. All right, so we can say yes to some of these cert bot commands. So now we can see uh, that Claude set up HTTPS. So if we go back to our website, we can see it no longer says insecure and we have HTTPS right here. So now we could give this link to anybody and they can go to our website and see what we're building. So what would we do next? Well, um, what we would do next is we would just keep building with Claude Code. So now you can ask it for the next feature and we can see it live update right on our site here. So this is like the fastest and easiest way in my opinion to vibe code and everything you do is automatically live in production and you can show it to people you can demo it uh, you can send the link out so it's just really quick and easy to do and it only costs six dollars a month plus your claude code subscription so it's like the cheapest way to go all right so let's just demonstrate how we would make a change so let's say uh, let's make the theme more orange we like orange better than green so let's have it make the uh, retro to-do list app a little bit more orange themed all right so Claude code is finished so we can reset our page and see if we can see the green color theme all right um, you might run into some caching issues which is what i just ran into so if you notice over here um, we reload and we still see the green and we come back here and we see in an incognito window, we see the orange. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. If you're not seeing your changes reflected right away, you might just have to wait a couple minutes um, or open up an incognito window just to test. Um, so yeah, and that's the loop. You would just ask Claude Code for a change and then you can see it live right here. Um, and everything's uh, quick and easy. So let me know if you have any questions. Subscribe if you wanna learn 
more about using AI tools to improve your development workflow, and thanks for watching.